Well, Happy New Year. This is Talking Drupal. This is Wednesday, December 31st, 2014, which means it's the last day of 2014. And this is our Happy New Year show. So everyone together, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So what are your plans tonight, guys? Oh, <laughs> This is a crazy yeah. question because <laughs> we're not recording this uh, <laughs> December 31st. We, and I'm imagining we, no one has any plans made yet. I'd, no, like, I'd like to make a prediction that I'm probably going to be sitting watching the ball drop in my living room while my wife's asleep on the couch. Ah, okay. I'll let you know next week how that turns out. <laughs> well, our, uh, our son Trevor is going to be in, in California with his girlfriend. Um, Phoebe will have gotten back. We will have had a, a wonderful birthday celebration for my darling wife prior to this. And we will probably be doing something with my wife's sister and daughter and, and perhaps her boyfriend. Um, so Is we'll she see. Is Eve baby? Uh, close. Ellen? Day before. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm just I'm just predicting that I won the lottery uh, today, and uh, my 2015 is going to be very different than 2014. So <laughs> I can't wait I, to share all my winnings with you guys. <laughs> oh, sweet! I make it the cut. <laughs> so joining us as usual, Jason Pomental from HW Design. Uh, and for those of you on video, we're recording this with a different technology today. So uh, just because we're doing it ahead of time. So welcome, Jason. Hey there. Good to be here. And are you, ex not are you quite excited? Here yet are you excited for the earlier. new year? I am. I am. We've got some some cool things lined up to work on. Uh, we've got workshops coming up, and uh, this will be the year that our our daughter actually gets to enroll in a college that she's all awfully excited about. So. I've got lots of interesting things happening. It, it always amazes me every year that just the fact of the calendar switching from you know, the 31st to the 1st just makes a difference. I don't, I don't know. It feels fresh. It feels new. And it's not really. It's just the next day. But it's amazing how just that concept uh, changes a lot of things. Well, it's a little bit of renewal. You know? It is. It, it's, it's maybe the opportunity for us to commit to, to changing, um, which is maybe a little bit of what we'll talk about today. Also joining us, and we have a different order on the screen, which is different. But I'm going to go all the way to the right. We have John Picozzi. From oomph. You're, you're right, my top. I have you guys top to bottom. <laughs> okay, all right. Which that statement sounded really weird. Uh, <laughs> kicking, kicking off the new year in a weird fashion. Uh, what's going on? I'm looking forward to the new year. John, I do think you should change your clothes, though, because you haven't changed in two weeks. So, yeah. Well, um, <laughs> I've been off. I've been out off for two weeks, so I'm just going kind of taking it easy. Awesome. And Nick Laughlin from Enlightened Design is still joining us from Colombia. Yep. And how has your two weeks been there, Nick? <laughs> it's been great. <laughs> Actually, this this day will have been the two year two years since I met my wife. So we met on New Year's Eve going to New York. So we'll be spending a much warmer New Year's. Nice. Uh, Nick, that is a fast-paced relationship because you met her 24 months ago and you've been married for over a year. Year and a half. A yeah, year and a half. And think, now you're in Columbia visiting her family. You get you yeah. move quickly. I got to tell you, my friend. Well, when you know, you know. I guess that's, that's right. what you say. And, you know, though we're, yeah, we, we, uh, we move pretty quickly. There's, there's no way around that. <laughs> That's great. So today we're, we're going to, this is going to be a shorter show than usual. We're anticipating, um, which is just talking about some of the things we're excited about for 2015. Um, mostly Drupal related and some that aren't. Um, let's start with the most obvious one, right? The one that's right in our face, which is Drupal 8. So as we are finishing out 2015, we're at beta three. I think four was supposed to come out today. Am I correct? Or yes? 2014. What's that? We're finishing our 2014. Did I say 15? Sorry. Um, we're finishing 2014. I think the beta four is supposed to come out very in the next few days. Uh, okay. but we're we're, we're uh, using Drupal 8. Um, we have a weekly discussion group that we're involved with that we talk about things with Drupal 8 and we're all studying and learning. So what are, you, what are you guys thinking about it right now? 
And what are you looking forward to in 2015 specific to Drupal 8? The number one thing I'm looking forward to is it coming out, being released. Um, I, th I think it's going to be the latter half of 2015. Um, probably sometime September, October. Um, but I'm definitely looking forward to being able to use it. I, hey, guys, I have, hey guys, uh, I need to warn you about something here. Is that the tool we're using today, anything in the chat window is showing up in the video recording. So <laughs> just a heads up. Good to uh, know. <laughs> uh, nothing bad has thing. come across yet, but uh, John just posted that Beta 4 came out today. And I, I saw that posted about three weeks ago, so I, I'm glad they're on schedule. <laughs> um, I, I'm really excited about about the theming layer. I, I mean, the, I've only gotten to to play with it a little bit, but um, but I think the power of Twig is pretty amazing, and and the cleanliness of it and the control that we're going to have, I think, really sets the stage for doing some some pretty awesome stuff, um, which ties into some of the other uh, stuff about sort of general responsiveness that that's coming along that that I can't wait to incorporate. I, th I think CMI is the thing I'm still most excited about in Drupal 8, but it, it, it seems like it's one of the things that has the longest way to go. Um, from player, I'm, I've been taking part of that Drupal 8, exploring Drupal 8 session most weeks, and it, it certainly feels like one of the most unfinished pieces that has been promised on a release. Um, but I expect that a lot of attention is being paid to it. Uh, and it will it will catch up shortly. I'm actually excited to build site, start building sites in Drupal eight, and and because of that, I'm actually predicting that uh, Drupal eight is is ready for uh, DrupalCon LA, which everybody else except Jason has told me that I'm crazy. But I, I, oh, I, I tell you that you're crazy all the time. I just wasn't specifically related to this prediction. Yeah. <laughs> so let's that's, talk about a prediction. So what are the predictions? And these are based on nothing, right? Like any good prediction is. Yeah, I have absolutely yeah, do we, no do fact. Do you want to say release candidate or full release? Ooh. Um, I could say I could see a release candidate coming out by DrupalCon LA by the end of DrupalCon LA. So let, let's. So what's the difference between a candidate and a full release? Well, candidate. Release, oh, go ahead. The, yeah, there. I mean, there won't be any other other feature changes or anything like that. It's just going to be bug fixing existing stuff at that point. Yeah. So I, I think these predictions need to be full release. Let, let's talk about when, um, because, because I, I could see a huge gap between release candidate and full release. So let's, let's go with full release. I'd say full release sometime in the end of September release candidate really is just, if there are no new critical bugs found, then it will release, but usually things get found. Um, I'd say end of September, beginning of October. Nick, I'm with you. I'm a, I'm a Q3 guy, the way I look at it today, based on nothing. John? I'm going, again, I'm saying uh, DrupalCon LA. I think, uh, I think they have... I'm going to go with a full release. I think there's a full release by the end of DrupalCon LA. 22 weeks. It's ambitious. I think it's ambitious, but I think uh, I'm, I'm, well. Let's put it this way: I'm hopeful that that that's the case. Yeah, I'm I'm a Drupal eight glass half full kind of guy, and and I would I would like to see it by then. And I know that there's also been a lot of effort um, from many organizations plus the Drupal Association releasing funds to to pay for development of certain things. Um, so, yeah, I you know. It feels like there's a lot of rough edges right now, but I know sometimes that can be a little deceiving. Um, That's true. So I'm I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my eggs in that basket with John. Okay, so we get uh, well. This is interesting. So we get two people in Q3 and two people in Q2. Q2. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Great. Hmm. So. Um, what, what else are you guys looking forward to in 2015? Related to Drupal first. Anything else? Uh, well, uh, back to the front end stuff that I'm excited about. It's just performance. Uh, I mean, that's like the kinds of things. I mean, that's been such a, a big topic in the web design world, uh, performance budgets and, and really 
um, really optimizing what you're what you're putting out from the CMS into the browser or whatever the device is. Um, and I, I think the kind of control that we're going to get with with Twig is going to make that really pretty amazing. I think we'll finally be able to have a front end that that we can be proud of. I, I've got one. Um, as Drupal 8 releases, whether it be Q2 or Q3, Drupal 6 is being retired and uh, put to pasture, which means lots of business opportunity uh, for people to upgrade from 6 to 7 or 8. So I'm looking forward to the opportunity that the release of Drupal 8 brings to people who are still sitting in Drupal 6. Yeah, I can't wait to hear Drupal 6. It was, it was great uh, first time. It was a huge improvement over Drupal 5, but it's showing its age. I, every time I find myself going back to do something in Drupal 6, I find myself banging my head against a wall, wishing it was Drupal 7. <laughs> And I'm sure the same thing will happen in three years with Drupal 7 once we get used to Drupal 8 and start seeing the, you know, the fun stuff coming down the pike with Drupal 9 and 10. But I'm, I think Drupal 6 is more than ready to be retired. So one of the things to think about if you have Drupal 6 customers is beginning to approach them. You should probably be doing that sooner than later. Um, I've already approached our Drupal 6 customers and let them know what was going on with Drupal 8 and that they needed to start to make some plans in 2015 from a budgeting perspective right. to say, hey, you need to get off this because it's not going to be supported any longer. I'm not suggesting you go to eight, but I am suggesting you have a path, at least a path to seven in 2015. Yeah. Well, and, and I think the the migration from six to seven is often not too terribly painful. I mean, it can be depending on the complexity of the site. Um, I mean, we've we've done a couple of those now, um, and just even recently, um, the opportunities that you get to do much better things uh, with fewer modules and less code um, makes that process, you know, a really worthwhile one. And and I think that it's going to be even less going from seven to eight. And, yeah. and you you also have to think too, if if someone's sitting in Drupal six with their website, there's probably lots of other opportunities other than a conversion of the right. Google version. Yeah. Mean, they're then probably they, sitting with a non-responsive site. They right. probably need to be refreshed in all kinds of areas. Yeah. Yep. That's definitely true. So the, so the Drupal 6 migration boom in 2015 is <laughs> Um, what else are you, are you are you really looking forward to that? Uh, I feel like I feel like <laughs> yeah. I'm happy to get rid of Drupal six like everybody else, but I don't. It's like spring cleaning. Know. You feel good when you yeah, look at the module yeah, yeah. page, and, right. and you have 270 modules enabled out of 400. And, you know, you convert to Drupal seven, you have 98. It's just it's just a great feeling. <laughs> you know, it's faster, <laughs> and, and it's also a way to say to existing customers. I'm not this. I, I'm not telling you you need to do this because I want you to upgrade. It's because you have to at this point. I mean, you're yeah. at the point that you really need to move on. No longer secure. Yeah. All right. What else we got for 2015? John, any other yeah. kid coming in the house? 2015. Whoa! Um, one child now. <laughs> I figured I'd throw that out there. <laughs> there there's a, a live one there. There's a there's a good possibility. Good okay. Possibility Felt like it was time. Don't you agree, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because clearly he's starting to get sleep again. So you know, yes. got to take care of that. <laughs> and uh, you know, the same question is coming to Nick, right? <laughs> I've actually, we've been asked that more here than, than back in the U.S. Oh, that doesn't Oliver. surprise me at all. You're surrounded yeah. by 46 relatives down there. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So, the, so the thousand people that are watching or listening to us today, do you have any prediction there yourself? No, not yet. Uh, okay. We're probably going to wait two or three years still. I mean, we... we, we, we well, you guys have barely hit the drinking age at this point, so, right. you know. <laughs> we're, I'm going to be 30 next year. It's, uh, we got, we got a few more years. Oh, it's time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Jason, I think for you and I, we can both say that's not happening, right? That is not happening. Okay, we're 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 all set. <laughs> all right. How about some how about some non Drupal things we're looking forward to in two thousand? Oh, hey, we left something out. DrupalCon. Yeah, I'm really, uh, LA, I'm, really looking, right? I'm really looking forward to DrupalCon LA. Um, I think it's going to be uh, 
a wealth of information about Drupal 8 um, as well as uh, just all around a, a great, great spot to have a, have a conference. Considering I'm in Bogota, I think we shouldn't skip over DrupalCon Bogota. <laughs> of course not. Absolutely <laughs> good. It's happening in February. Yeah. Um, I kind of wish that this trip didn't fall so close to DrupalCon Bogota because I was planning on going there, but it's just difficult to justify flying back down here two weeks after we get home. Right. Um, but it, it, it's got some really nice talks lined up and, you know, I, I can say from first-hand experience, Bogota is a great city. Uh, if you if you're kind of on the fence, I'd highly recommend it. And you know, another uh, another Southern Hemisphere event, Drupal South, is going to be going on. Um, I would, I'm totally drawing a blank on the dates, but I know that they just announced that Angie Byron is giving key, one of the keynotes. Oh wow! Well, and should uh, that should be really good. This could be in Melbourne. All right. So, how about some non-Drupal? Uh, things we're looking I, forward to in 2015. I think we're going to see the next evolution of media queries. Um, there's been a lot of work in, uh, in developing element queries. So you can think of that as an element query that's applied to a box instead of the, the whole width of the viewport, uh, which when you think about it is actually way more valuable. So if you want to do a responsive image, you really want to tailor that image to the size of its container not the size of the viewport. Uh, Jason, right. when you say this, the standards move so slowly, though. So, well, uh, do but you, what do you see happening? That's not really true. I mean, look at look at how quickly the picture element went from a Kickstarter project. Well, it wasn't Kickstarter; it was on another platform. But, um, you know, to actually being implemented in browsers, that happened in like a year. So I mean, there's there's a I, lot. I think of it was I think it was debated a lot longer than a year, right? So it was when yeah. they finally. But but the the all of all of the work that was done in actually defining it and and fleshing it out, and I mean, like that that actually moved pretty quickly. Hmm. So and and also bear in mind that you know we're able to use picture fill with that syntax um, eight months ago. So, I mean, I think that there's going to be enough work done that we'll have reasonable polyfills to actually start to incorporate element queries um, sometime in, in 2015. I mean, there are solutions that you can use now. They're just all JavaScript dependent. I think we're going to start to see stuff move into the browser, and I think that's going to be a, a really big win for, for performance again. Yeah. Anyone else? I'm hoping for an extremely rapid spread of Google Fiber, but I'm not extremely uh, hopeful for that showing up in Worcester. <laughs> but it'd be nice. I'm uh, I'm actually excited to get uh, my iPhone six, which is probably going to be happening in about February of 2015. So, just showed up today. Oh, yeah. Can't turn it on yet, <laughs> John. I think that's like a 2014 thing, but that's okay. Hey, hey, hey. I mean, vinyl came back, right? It, it may be a 2014 <laughs> thing for some people, but for me, okay. it's 2015. <laughs> okay. So wearables, like, like watches. Oh, yeah. watches sure actually, Google, yes, sure Google Glass will be done. Maybe they'll actually be useful. Yeah, you know what? I mean, it's, it's a technology that I'm fascinated with, wearable technology. And I've had this uh, watch for a, quite a few months since it came out. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's useful and it's not useful. It's distracting as a phone is and, but it's also, um, convenient at times. So I, I'm still really on the fence about where this technology is going and I'm not sure Apple is going to bring anything new to this. Yeah. To, to I don't, this place. So the, the, the biggest I don't know thing, they are either. So the, the biggest thing for me, I think there's a big social issue with the, with the watch. So if you're sitting having coffee with someone or you're having a conversation with them and they look at that watch, what does that mean to you today? That they're ready to go. They're looking for an out. Yeah, but in the future, it might mean, hey, I just got a text message. It's a very odd social. And yeah. it's one of the things I've experienced wearing this watch is that people look at me like, oh, you need to leave? And like, oh, no, no, I'm just kind of looking at my text message. So it, there's a whole social thing with, yeah. with the wearables well, that hasn't even been touched on yet. Yeah, like I, wearing I, your I Google Glass in the bathroom. <laughs> right, John. 
I, I think that there's th those issues are around with, with phones too. And, and I think it's become way too common for people to, you know, have their phone on the table when they're having coffee and having conversations with people. And I mean, I think that there, that's, that, that yeah, but the difference is Jason, there. when, when someone picks up their phone and looks at it, you know what that means. Right. When you look at their watch. It means something completely different. That yeah. it, well, it, it's actually, it's actually interesting because I am, uh, at least my wife would say addicted to my phone and being think, here. I not think all of stars, our wives would say that. Yeah, we're I, probably. But, <laughs> Although my wife uses more data every month than I do consistently. So I, there is that. They always do, Jason. Well, don't you uh, don't you feel bad, all right? Don't you feel bad well, about that. Well here's here's the thing though. I don't have service here, so I don't have my I don't even carry my phone with me. And for the first couple of days, I felt, every time I walked out the door I felt like I was missing something because I didn't have my keys, I didn't have my phone, all I had was my wallet. But it took maybe three days to get used to it and you know, there's been a couple of times where it's like, oh, I wish I could check my email or, you know, see something. But that it really, maybe it's because I'm in a new country and experiencing a bunch of new stuff. But, you know, I very quickly went back to the pre-smartphone days where, yeah, you could open the phone, but all you were doing was looking at a clock. Um, I, I don't know if the same thing will happen with the phone, uh, with, the, with the phone watch or whatever you're going to call it. Oh, yeah, but with the watch, that wouldn't be working either if you didn't have the phone. Yeah. So I guess it doesn't really matter. Good point. Hey, any, any other tech things people looking forward to in 2015? Any predictions? Um, Jason, Jason already took the Google, the, uh, the, the Apple watch, huh? Um, no, I don't know. I guess we could call that a wrap then. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, yeah, anyway, we, we wanted to just put a short show together uh, and wish everyone a happy new year. Um, we're really looking forward to, Talking Drupal in 2015. We have some new plans for the show. Uh, maybe going a little bit different direction. Have some exciting things coming, which I'll tell all you guys about later. Uh, <laughs> That's all we've got. So, uh, Happy New Year. And uh, Jason, um, where can people find you in any last parting words for 2014? Uh, it has been fantastic and an honor to be a part of the show so thank you steve and thank you nick and john for being a part of it and uh, really enjoyed what we've started to build here and i look forward to seeing how it develops next year and and see what what comes of it uh, so you can find me at jay pomantel on pretty much all the social networks and everywhere else at hwdesignco.com and coming up in a few weeks at the general assembly offices in boston i'll have a workshop on, on responsive typography. You can find out more about that at webcoffee.co. Jason, make sure you stick that in the, the, the links to that in the show notes. So we can get Will do. Thank you. How about you, John? Uh, as always, you can find me at John Picozzi on all the social networks. Uh, and you can find me uh, at uh, umfink.com. And Mr. Laughlin. You can find me online at Nick's Fan pretty much everywhere. And I'm looking forward to coming back to the U.S. next week, I guess. Uh, 2014, again, was a great year both for business, personal, and for the show. You know, just to think it was almost a year ago, I think, that we had Therese on. We've had, you know, many great guests. Um, and it's I think we've really hit our stride, and it's been, it's been great. That could be a prediction for 2015, huh? Getting, getting Dries back on. Will it happen? Stay tuned and find out. When Drew Blake comes out, I think it will. Yeah, he's a pretty easy guy to uh, connect with as long as you get in the queue. That's the key. So uh, we'll reach out to him again for 2015. I'm Stephen Cross, at Stephen Cross on Twitter, uh, parallaxinfotech.com for the business stuff. And guys, Happy New Year. We'll talk Happy New Year. Happy New Year. 2015. I'm going to go drink a bottle of champagne. Take care. <laughs>